is day 26. I'm trying to work out how I'm gonna like restructuring the plan because I'm like, you know, I've gone this feeling of phase one, phase two, phase three and mapping something out. And I'm really trying to structure it for myself and my brain. And then when I'm going to put it through to teach and that's why I've talked to myself through this process, um, hoping that people will learn how to talk to themselves through this process. But, you know, understanding that like and seeing this kind of weird journey in these different things. Um, so my physical health and my mental health, like I'm seeing it, right? So I myself have had a lifetime of trauma and abuse that I've had to really recognize has impacted my life. And if I'm honest, that was the problem. Like never really acknowledging how much of an effect that that had on, on me, what that meant, how I was living in the world, whatever. And, and finding your place in this world for some people isn't something that they think about. For me, it, it, it clearly is um, so much so that I had to like really clean the slate. My, my issue was I had to really kind of go everything and, and reset um, in order to save my life. So when it says like, and I say that because I actually wanted to live, not, not die. Well, the patterns of the up and down in the mental um, has a massive effect on the body, on weight and different things. And then that, that goes to what a history that somebody has, right? So for my, for my history, my obsession with, you know, the gym or, or not, not the gym, well, the gym, but at a time, um, nutrition, wellness, all of those things. But I didn't realize how much of a hold and like how much that had over me then to abandon it, but still be in it and then to come back around. And I say that because look, it's, I've just recently, I literally, as of yesterday, when I got to go back to the gym to work out, almost going back to my roots after uh, like literally eliminating it from my life for about uh, four or five, five years now. I had done a, a fight in that in, and changed, but that was a short period of time and different things of, of ways of training. Um, but I, I, I realized like my comfort zone and different things like I, I is to get back to some weights and some resistance training. Why? Because uh, at my age, there's also the, the, the idea like you have to come into reality of what things are. Coming into reality meaning what's going to happen in the future if I don't take action to make changes. So great. Yes. I've been in a, like, I, I've been in a depression. That's real. I went to go get help and I was further abused. That's real. So I have like, you're going to notice in my video, I, and this is, I just want to like full close disclosure. That doesn't mean I think every, because that would be very inaccurate to think every doctor is a failure, to think every therapist is a failure, to think every person with a certification is a failure, to think, I don't think that at all. However, in my life, I've only experienced, and I, and I can say this because I've experienced so many, and I've actually, as a person who's tried everything, and I mean, like, really, if I had to add it all up, hundreds, and then I've also interviewed people in the space that were at my level and I could communicate to them in ways that those doctors, those people with certifications couldn't get the same information I could. So that's why I go around picking quote unquote fights with my speech or those things or different ways because I'm like, I have to get to this understanding that I'm also not like it goes back to how am I going to I'm the like coaching myself to be my own like so like I'm my own doctor in a way and I'm the patient but I also need to be the guide and then that comes to okay what am I choosing to put in my head to give me this information to speak to myself and being very cautious of that to pull myself out of a, a clinical depression to love my body to love myself and to understand who I am when I'm literally like alone alone right that's how can somebody go from being so suicidal, um, so broken, so whatever, and pulling themselves up and, and changing their life? And then and recognizing I'm in this middle kind of phase because the, I, I'm i not in the place where I'm, I'm really, cre I, I have to understand, and this is the thing to anyone, 
it's a choice to create and design your life, right? I, and I understand that. I've understood that more than most people can really recognize, but to the point where it was at one point in my life, the mask that covered, that was the lie that covered all the trauma. So that's almost like, it's like a, I built my life on a, a, on a pile of garbage in a way. It's like the land came, there's garbage all underneath. And then eventually everything kind of, almost like the Simpsons when, when Homer, right? He puts the, it's like the, the, nobody in the town's recognizing. If you've ever seen the Simpsons movie, nobody in the t town is, is recognizing that there's a whole bunch of garbage being piled up and put put into something, but they're not seeing it. Then all of a sudden it, it explodes and then you, and then now there's a mess all over the place. That's really what my life was. And now that I think about that, just a pile of like the guard, I built everything on, on top, like the, the land and the house and the stuff on top of that. And then the garbage eventually blew up. But if you, I, I have to and pull myself out where recognizing wanting like the suicidal thoughts that I've had over the last number of years, I've had my entire life. They only went away for a period of time. Really for me, I had to recognize they only went away for a period of time, whether that be a de a, almost a, well, not even a decade. I went through a period where that was the abnormal to not think about suicide or death. That's a very, I had to be like that. And a lot of people, that's too much for people to understand or relate to, but I have to do this. This is for me. And then one day maybe it will be for people that have been there to, to, because the goal that I want to create the life now that I've cleaned out, I'm cleaning out the garbage. I have to recognize I'm in the phase where I've, I've cleaned out that I've recognized that. And now I want to recreate that life for myself. Okay. How? Because it goes deeper than the body. And that's what this with this body reflection and talking to myself and everything, understanding this goes back like I said, I'm, so my physical stuff had something that happened that triggered a lot. I'm still not physically like feeling great, but I'm feeling better. And I'm going, okay, then I got to make baby steps to go back um, to circle. And that's say for me, joining the gym, doing something else, getting out of my rut, right? Because I'm, this is not the way I've been, right? Just focus now on trying to get out of a rut, ironically, and staying more isolated to, to focus on only work is that's not healthy because then now I'm like, like a hypocrite. I have to realize that, but I've also had to understand that, right? Because what do we want success right, right away when, when we're doing this, what do we want? If the body doesn't change right away, we're frustrated and quit. If something doesn't have like nobody, like the long-term success is, is hard. Like life is going to be like this all the time, no matter what, no matter what I do, I, I get that. Okay, so how do I create the life though that I want that I have these, when this happens, I'm in a place where I can cope and it's better and I'm not, it's not catastrophic thinking. Because, because for me, so, so, and I say that, the reason I, like suicide was a thing that I, I really attempted in my life at one time and it wasn't, and I didn't tell anybody, it wasn't like, oh, you know, whatever for attention, I just did it and it didn't work. It didn't work in the sense that my life, like, based on the, the way it was, um, I got to the hospital in time and the doctor saved my life. Um, so for that, as much as I criticize doctors and whatever, I guess that's good that that happened. Um, but that gives a person a very different perspective because it was, I, you know, the real reality of, you know, you've got to change. And I've been fighting to, to make those changes and those things for, you know, now over 13 years. And I didn't realize though how sick I was here. And in all of this and these video documents and the things when you have to look at yourself and be brutally honest and look at yourself, quote unquote, naked, can you be that honest with yourself? Can you be that honest with yourself? Can you acknowledge that, you know what, maybe I, I am always constantly focusing on the wrong things to give myself value, not recognizing that one day you're going to lose it anyway. So instead of actually like going, hey, look, thank you for the body that I have. Thank you that this, I, it might be in pain right now, but you know what, it's here and it's in existence and it's taking me wherever, wherever. Reframing that brain when you have so much negativity and negativity that's, you've been made to believe that's what your values are. Sexual traumas, abuse, people in your head, manipulation, and then it just stacks up and then 
if you're not, if you don't know how to talk to yourself and you've been made to believe that when you talk to yourself and you're kind, when you've been made to believe when you talk to yourself and you're kind, there's something wrong with you, it's hard to break out of that cycle. I'm really, really, really recognizing how, how deep my rabbit hole went. Um, but I know I can pull myself out of it and I've had to because what I, I became, I had to become a, my friend to myself and these videos are a way of doing that. And I encourage people to do the same because you're more brutally honest with yourself when you start to talk to yourself and nobody's around you to hear that conversation. And that's why so many therapists and so many people don't realize I've learned and I may, and, you know, that my, I want to make it my mission that a lot of therapists at least understand this um, and people that are going to therapy that when we talk to somebody else, no matter what, we're going to even when we're going to put a filter on it, which actually stops you from being as authentic as you possibly can be because you're still worried about the judgment of that therapist. And that therapist, however they are or doc, or whatever, is going to have an impact on you because it's going to trigger something. That's just how it is. So now that you're looking at you as your own therapist, that's why I say I'm your guide, not the doc, that's, that's the thing is, is that. And it's funny because I had these doctors accuse me of, that's a real thing too. I needed actual help from the doctors instead of getting legal letters saying that I'm claiming to be a doctor when I'm like, no, no, I'm trying to educate you doctors and I never want that status because I'm, I, I never do. Because it's, it, it's such, because I'm so angry but I'm like, I have to let go of that anger and go, well, okay, well, wait, right. That, that's what I, advice I would give to somebody is that when, you know, you've had adversities, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to change it? Well, that's the way I'm doing it. But I had to learn that the, 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 the person triggering me most was me. Okay. Now why am I triggered? Okay. Now what am I going to do about it? Okay. But that also means seeking advice, advice from the right sources. And that means when you're totally alone, or, or, so you might not be totally alone, but recognize the people in your head if their advice is worth listening to. If they don't have what you want, right? Don't don't take their advice. Doesn't that that's the most dangerous patterns we get into, and why people aren't successful, truthfully, is because we do listen to our our moms, our dads, our brothers, our sisters, people that we like we we love, but might like if that doesn't put us on our path and that ironically is sometimes most often why we don't love our bodies or ourselves because of the guilt we have to live somebody else's life or how that our decisions are going to impact them that's the hardest thing to get over i've had to learn especially when you're a mother especially when you've been a mother of trauma or ever had had trauma especially when something happens to your child and you're in protective mode or blah 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 whatever it is for people and you just have to know your story and yourself. And can you talk to yourself? And I've learned most people can't. They lie to themselves. That, that's the biggest thing with humanity. Why 99% 99 of the population is in is, is struggling with so many things. That's why we see that like as a whole in the industry, the fitness industry, diets and, and nutrition and blah, 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 all over the place and failure. It's why we see as a whole industry, you know, the corruptions of, you know, politicians and business and whatever, whatever. It's why we see globally, you know, countries not being able to, to get together and, 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 and be able to interact with each other because really at the core of it, humanity has a hard time being honest with themselves. However, I'm going pretty deep on that, but it, it, it I believe that we could do the, the funny, the world's problems would be solved if everybody started with themselves by being brutally honest. It goes back to that. If you want to change the world, you know, change yourself, but and random acts of kindness. So that first kindness though has to be to ourselves. Why? Because hurt people hurt people. And if we weren't hurting, we wouldn't hurt other people. And that would actually solve the whole world's problems. But 99% of the population, 99% isn't willing to do that. So can you evolve for yourself? You might not be the 99% of whatever success is, right? That's the definite different definitions. But for yourself, can you get to a place in your head that you can be so brutally honest with yourself? I challenge you to that because that's the challenge I'm putting myself through. 
that is the challenge. I don't want to be like the 99% in the world. I want to be the one, I want to be the top of the what, top one, 1%. And that's my goals are so big. They scare me so much so that they send me back into a depression. However, that's the cycle that I have to break for myself. And saying that out loud is so scary because I go, well, how can I be? Because that, the step, what does that mean? Well, it means for me being the best version of myself to see what I'm capable of, no matter what. So who's going to go in my head, what that's going to be and how that's going to affect my body and my mind and all of those things. So I said, you never know what you're going to get when you video diary. That's all I've learned, right? Just talk and see what happens and see where you're at.